In the previous videos, I covered the centralized layer tree gateway use case. In this video, I'd like to focus on IBGP eVPN with VSX, which we now support in 10.4. This is my IP fabric with slash 31 links between the leaf and spines, and I also have the loopback zero, which are unique slash 32s across all your leaf and spine devices. Switches in a rack, you have the VSX ISL link, which is placed into the leg, and you can put multiple links into, what, into that. You also have the dedicated VSX keep alive link. For the logical VTAP function, you require loopback one on both the VTAPs on the same IP, same anycast IP. So rec one has 100.1, rec two has 100.2. This is for the VXLAN tunnel. So the tunnel will form source 101, the destination 102 between the recs. Let's start by looking at the configs of our leaf and spine switches. Create a plan and then edit. Let's look at our spine switches first. On the spine switches, you can see they have unique host names, unique router IDs, unique management IP. These are the ports facing the leaf switches one on one on both spine one and spine two. It's connected to one A. And they all have unique slash 31 IPs or an OSPF area zero point to point links. Same for one on one two, one one three, which go to the other leaf switches. Loopback zero is unique on each spine switch. And they're on area zero as well. So this is the BGP with unique router IDs and the same AS number. And these are the loopback zeros of the remote leaf switches. So both spine switches are configured the same way. And under address family eVPN, we'll activate all leaf switches, send the community, and specify route reflector client for all four of them. And that's it for the spine switches. Let's look at leaf 1A1B first. This is the layer 2 VTAP. In REC1, they have unique host names, they have unique router IDs, which use loopback zero in area zero of OSPF. They have VLANs, same VLANs configured 11 to 13 are facing the server, 4000 is the transit VLAN between the switches. Under eVPN, you have your VLANs, you have your route distinguisher, which you can leave as auto. Route targets, you can leave as auto or set it manually. So manual is required only when you're using eBGP eVPN. In IBGP eVPN, you can leave it as auto, or you can set it statically if you wanted to. So we have a lag here. It's for ISL, and we allow all VLANs. And this is the VSX lag with the multi chassis facing the server. And for this, we only allow certain VLANs to the server. This is the dedicated VSX Keep Life link on slash 31 subnet, and the physical port for the ISL. 49 and 50 are the uplinks towards the spine switches. This is here, spine one and two using OSPF point to point links. D1 is the physical link facing the server, and loopback zero is unique. They have unique IPs on both switches. You can see loopback one, they are the same on both switches. So you don't see that any change. 4000 is the transit VLAN. I use a slash 31, and again, in OSPF. So if uplinks fail on leaf 1A, for example, traffic is forced to utilize. This VLAN 4000 to go through 1B. For VXLAN, we use the same source IP of loopback 1 and we specify the VNI to be the mapping. VSX, we have the ISL link, specify the roles, which is primary, which is secondary, specify the keep alive peer IP, and specify no split recovery. So this will help if there's a total VSX cut, right? The ISL link is cut, the keep alive is broken as well. So to prevent the logical VTAP from coming up on the secondary switch, we do this. No split recovery. For BGP, all in the same AS number, they have unique out IDs, and they all point to the spine switches, which are route reflectors, 11 and 12. Under eVPN, we activate and send those communities as well. There's a config for 1A and 1B. Let's look at 2A and 2B now. This is the VSX pair in REC2, and they have unique host names. But because this is the centralized layer tree gateway, they have VRFs. So this is the VRF external facing the core network. Under address family IP for Unicast, you specify the route targets. So basically, you would export 103 and import 103, which is external. You would also import 101 and 102, which are from VRFA. 101 is VRFA, 102 is VRFB. That's 101, you see here, they export. For VRFA, and one two is being exported for VRFB. 
But these two BRFs, they will import 103 in, which is the external. So this way, BRF A and B will never route between them, but they can both utilize the routes in the external. So under OSPF, they would have unique router IDs in OSPF area 0, same VLANs, 11.13 facing the server, 4000 facing for the transit SVI. Under EVPN, it will be the same as in REC1, you have the three VLANs specified RD Auto and the same route targets for each VLAN. Leg 1 is the same, it's for ISL. Leg 10 is also used for servers here, which you allow only the VLANs 11 to 13. Port 47 is for the Keep Alive on the slash 31 subnet, and you will, these are the physical ports for the ISL link. And you map it to leg 1. 47, 49, and 50. These are the uplinks facing the spines. So I have unique IP addresses. 51 is the port facing the server in leg 10. 53 is the port facing core, and both switches have unique slash 31 IPs as well, and it's attached to VRF external. Loopback 0 is unique across both switches, dot 3 and dot 4, but loopback 1 is the same, right? The Anycast IP 100.2 for the VXN tunnel, and they all have to be advertised under OSPF. These are the default gateway, active gate, gateway IPs on each VLAN. We have 11, 12, and 13. So 11 and 12 are attached to VRF A, but 13 is attached to VRF B. So these are the same configs on both 2A and 2B, but the physical IP is different. Active gateway IP is the same, physical IP is different. This is the transit VLAN between the switches. For interface VXLAN, we both use the same source IP, which is from loopback 1, 100.2. And we do our VLAN to VNI mapping. For VSX, same thing, specify your ISL, specify the VSX role, primary and secondary, specify the keeper live peers. And under BGP, they would have unique router IDs. And I enable fast external failover because it's facing the external on this rack 2 leaves. That's a peering to another ES number, right? It's ES65100, which is external. This would help if any links fail. So 11 and 12 are the spine switches, specify those and activate them under eVPN. We also send the community for VRF external. These are the IP addresses of the data center call, your peer, and then different AS number. We we'll activate those as well under address family IPv4. For VRF A and B, we just redistribute connected. As mentioned in previous videos, I use switches to simulate servers with VMs. I use VRFs to simulate the VMs. Let's take a look from the server's perspective, reachability. So server one has VM1, let's try to reach VM in rack two. So that works for large MTU. You can also get out, and that works for an IP on the call. Let's try to reach something in VRF B, right? 13. That is not allowed, you can see. But from VM3, VM3 is able to get out to the external network. From the spine's perspective, we can see the logical VTAP IPs as well as the loopback addresses. So this is rack one, right? two next hops. To one A and one B, right? Two, two next hops. Same thing as seen in spine two. Same thing. Logical VTAP IP for the VXLAN. On the spines, we can also check the MAC addresses learned because it's the route vector. You can see both next hops. The MAC addresses learned from right one and MAC address learned from right two for the different VNI. Same information is seen on both spine one and spine two. From leaf one perspective, you can see LACP, the multi chassis lag is up, up 10. It's up on leaf 1A and 1B. So this is 10, it's facing the server, both up and forwarding traffic. You can also check BGP table. You can see the MAC address is learned and the next hop. So this next hop, one is local, two is remote, right? In rack two. But that means these MAC addresses are learned from rack two. These are local, which match MAC address. FD54 is local, and that's shown FD54, right? local, on leg 10. The remote, which is B62, B62, remote 102. The same information is seen on both 1A and 1B, right? B62, remote 102. And that is sent into the MAC table, this BGP information. From MAC 2, leave 2A and 2B, we can also check the same information, BGP, and see remote MAC addresses, FD54, is from MAC 1, and MAC 2 has B62, right? Local. And that is shown also in the MAC table. Remote FD54, through EVPN, next hop will be rec1. In local, B6D2, learn locally on leg 10. The same information is shown in both 2A and 2B because they have independent control. 
plane, MAC address, learned both the EVPN table as well as the MAC address table. And they're both forwarding at the same time. But because they are centralized layer 3 gateways, there's additional information. ARP table, you can see the remote VMs are shown, the next hop through the VXN tunnel and reach VRF. So from a route table perspective, VRF A, these are the 11 and 12 subnets and the external. VRF B has the 13 subnet and external. And VRF external has all 10, 11, 12, 13 and external. Let's run some continuous things from VM1 to the external network to validate fill over. Let it run. Let's go to 1B and you can see the lag 10 is up to the server. We're going to shut it down to force all traffic to use 1A. Shut down now. Validate is down. Let's check the pings. Any drop? 0% packet lost. Let's run the ping again. Let it run. This time we're going to go to 1A. We're going to shut down the uplinks towards both spine switches. So we're going ports 49 and 50. Shut it down. Go to OSPF. Now go down, right? We only have OSPF true. ISL link, the transit VLAN. From the spine's perspective, what change? To rack one, logical VTAP IP, two next hops. Previously, now you should only see one. So both the spine should see this. Only one way through one B now to get to this logical VTAP IP. So let's look. 0% packet loss as well through that failover link. So the last thing I would like to mention is even though the links between the leaf and the spines are down, EVPN is still up to establish, right? No change to 1A because it goes through the ISL link on both the spines. Like no impact to EVPN, even though your physical link has failed to spine one. Like only one way in to 1A, which is through 1B next hop. Mm -hmm.